you've been accused severally in the last few weeks of being a Marxist. It happened again last night. Uh, a backbench Tory MP said you were a Marxist with no interest in anything other than trying to tear down the government. Now, are you or are you not a Marxist? Because if you are a Marxist, then you're into revolution and into bringing down capitalism. So, are you or aren't you? Well, this government, every time they are losing an argument, they threaten to change the law and bring in more draconian measures that suppress the, the civil rights of people. This law has been in place for decades. The agency workers shouldn't uh, replace legitimately striking uh, workers in a, a lawful ballot. If he wants to do, spend his time doing that, that's up to him. There aren't agency workers that can replace our members in safety critical work. They're not going to be able to run 25,000 volt uh, electricity control centres. They're not going to signal high speed trains. They're not going to be able to maintain rolling stock. They're not going to be able to drive trains. So it's a bit of an irrelevance, really. I can't think of any other group of people in working class jobs whose pay and conditions and pension haven't been degraded over recent years. He fought to keep them uh, with a decent standard of living and I, I mean he succeeded and I think it's a strong lesson to other trade unionists. It's no good pandering to the, the establishment or trying to suck up or hoping you'll get a deal. At the end of the day you've got to stand up and fight or your members uh, living standard will be degraded. And we are the fourth richest country in the world. Is that necessary? Is it right? Of course it's not necessary, and of course it is not right. And I think that a culture that's held again by a perpetually suspended chopper is an indication that something's wrong. Yeah! Well, can I just say I don't agree with any of that. That's not a surprise to you. Uh, I actually believe the sanctions regime as applied uh, is fair. Uh, you'll always get the odd case and... Uh, where it's, well, let, let, let me finish. No, I don't agree with that. Enough is enough and it's about time that people made it clear where they stand on this. And I think people across the economy, nurses, postal workers, railway workers, are all about to stand together and say, we deserve a pay rise in this country. And that's coming. So it's not about whether or not we're just as uh, effective as we were three years ago. There is a bigger thing happening in this country that people don't seem to realise. And that is, people are not prepared to accept any longer that they've got to continue to be made poorer so that people at the top can continue to rake in profits. <coughs> That's over. So Keir Starmer and his team have got to work out a way how they connect with that and how they ride that wave of resistance and are in harmony with it, rather than standing to one side, waiting for somebody to tell them what to do. Are you too boring to be the next Prime Minister? <laughs> What is your assessment of how Keir Starmer's doing, first of all? Yeah. Profits are through the roof. Corporate pay at the top is absolutely obscene. And the only people in the economy that are being asked to tighten their belts are working class people. For 30 years in this country, wages have not kept up with inflation. At the same time, profits have really not exceeded inflation. You tell me There has been a transfer of wealth from working class people to people at the top. And that can't carry on. That has got to change. I have to tell you, it's a bit of a cheek having a programme asking a trade unions being greedy for asking, a pay, asking for a pay rise. But people will find it odd when it's not a strike day because there's people in this country spending 18% of their income travelling on trains. We've got the highest fares in Europe because profiteers have been robbing this country blind for years. At the same time, later on in this year, energy prices are going to be so high, some of my people will be spending two full months of take-home pay on energy, and you're telling us that we're greedy for expecting workers to keep up with that. One thing that constantly strikes me is the enormous sort of good nature and patience of the pickets because they are subjected to enormous provocation and aggravation and insults and they're extremely peaceable and they put up with being pushed and shoved and told where to stand and so on. I mean, to an extent that actually surprises me. I mean, I doubt if I'd be as patient if I was in that situation. If you've got 50 even more police vehicles escorting into work a small handful of miners in such a way that there's no possibility of the picketing miners stopping those people and peaceably trying to persuade them not to go into work. You've got a situation which is actually created by the policing which could well cause a breach of the peace. So whose peace are you protecting? Whose rights are you protecting? Even in the Thatcher years, this chaos 
did not happen. By and large, we never had capability assessment. And we never had a march by 3,000 blind and disabled people which heralded the beginning of this coalition.